is a system architect in the high energy laser department of Silas Aryan Group, and he will be doing the next presentation. So, without any further ado, since it's time, thank you, Julian, for being here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Laurent, um, and uh, he hello, everyone. So, my name is uh, Julian Bonchon. I'm a system architect at Silas and uh, I'm involved in the implementation of the Arcadia methodology and uh, the Capella tool uh, within Silas. And the purpose of today's talk is to present you how our experience with this and to, 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 to share the, the benefits, the hurdles we, we, we faced and uh, how everything is, uh, is working out. So, um, as a summary, we'll start with a SILAS presentation uh, and uh, I will present also the activities and products. And uh, before before presenting the use of Arcadia in SILAS, uh, sharing the benefits and hurdles, and, uh, uh, and then we'll go to the conclusions. So first thing first, uh, I believe it's important um, for, for me to present how, uh, what uh, challenges SILAS is facing and what kind of products and um, services we are delivering in order for you to understand what kind of challenges we, we, we tackle and how the Arcadia methodology come handy for us to address those challenges. So uh, Silas is a company that was funded in 1966. Uh, it is owned by uh, two main shareholders. One is HMS, two thirds of the, of the shares. It's a joint venture between MBDA and Saffron. And the other and the other shareholder is Lumibird. Silas is based in different places of France. Uh, main, uh, main location is Orléans, but we have also facilities in Bordeaux and Aubagne. We work with uh, several partners from national and regional economic, economic player. Uh, to uh, laboratory and research centers such as Exlim and uh, Institut Fresnel, and finally with uh, uh, some big in industry such as Airbus, McNess, Naval Group, uh, Southern, TMT, and so on. In terms of activities and products, we have three main sectors. Uh, so we have the different sector where we develop uh, laser target designators, uh, laser sniper and sight detectors, and also high energy laser. In the space and astronomy we have we also have uh, space bond lasers for telecommunications. Finally, we have industry and research uh, with the laser megajoule activities optical coatings also, and the optical ceramics. So a little bit of a zoom on the on the laser line products. So uh, at one end of the spectrum, we have Helma XP products. So it's more uh, low TRL re research and development uh, for, for high energy lasers. And uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we have Helma P, which is the closest uh, product we have, and it's uh, it's a laser effector which uh, aim is to cancel drones, and uh, that work on one microns, and it's uh, being developed at the moment, and it's very close to be to be a product. It's soon to be a product. Uh, in terms of um, so, we can see a few pictures of drones that were neutralized with the Helma P. There were there were a few showcase throughout the year, and um, it will be. It, it has been selected for the Paris Olympic Games of 2024, and it will be an opportunity to to, to see the, the the Helma P working. So, as you can see, in terms of products, we have a lot of um, different sectors that are very constrained, like space industry, uh, the defense sector, and uh, products that involves a lot of different. Um, a lot of different uh, fields, such as laser, optics, electronics, uh, mechanics, and so on. So that's where uh, a, a methodology comes handy in order to, to make sure we, we tie all the loose ends 
and uh, we, we, we work in an efficient way. So that's why Silas uh, started to, to implement the Arcadia methodology and to use the, Arcadia, uh, the, sorry, the Capella tool. So a bit of history first. Um, we started using a tailored version of Arcadia in early 2019. So it's quite new, even though it's been a few years. So we're still learning, but uh, we start also to 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 draw benefits from from this uh, from this use. We, we'll get to that later. In terms of application, we have um, I, I'm presenting a few examples of application for this uh, methodology because it's not yet fully deployed. We are still picking and selecting relevant projects in order to to show how, how efficient or, or handy it can be and uh, and uh, that's why we, we, we only have a few examples to, to, to show so in the defense uh, sector it's uh, it's applied on r and d Europe, european project sorry and national projects for the development of low mid and high energy laser we also have applied it on the this for the designators so for example there was a feasibility study uh, of an improved designator and it was also applied on the strategy departments for the low to high energy laser line of products um, then i will present a few i will follow up the, the arcadia methodology um, with uh, with the layers starting with the operational layers and go deeper and deeper and I will show a few examples of diagrams we have um, we are using for the laser application, and also also detail uh, the diagrams we, we are using in general. So for the first layer, operational analysis, we we use operational entity breakdown diagrams uh, to define operational entities. We also use uh, operational capability diagram for operational use cases. Uh, there, there, there is also the mission uh, or capa capability blank diagram, which allow for identification of actors uh, that contribute to, to capabilities. And, and in the right hand side, you can see a, a small example, an excerpt of one of our projects, where, uh, where you can see a few capability or mission, like visualize the aim spots, provide system status, target the M spots, engage the targeted M spots, manual and automatic uh, shutdown, and configure the activation and deactivation. So actors involved are our operator and targets. Uh, other diagrams used in this layer are operational entity scenarios, where we describe interactions between operation actors uh, for specific life, life cycle phase. And we have also mode state machine diagrams uh, that define the life cycles and different states of um, that, that, that are that pertains to to, to the system. Uh, so on to the next layer, the functional and non-functional uh, layer. We, we we use contextual system actor, where we define interactions between actors and system. So here again, it's a small uh, exact example from one of our projects. On the bottom, you can see the, the high energy laser source or system. And you can see a few of the actors that are involved um, in this project with the, the host systems, the turrets and the targets. And such diagrams provide a handy way to summarize, let's say the boundaries between the different uh, players to see uh, what interfaces we, we have to handle and the kind of, the kind of information that are shared uh, across those interfaces. So yeah, a uh, very handy way for us to, to capitalize on the, on the assumption of the project. Uh, still in the functional and non-functional uh, layer, we have uh, functional breakdown diagrams. Again, an example, uh, uh, an exit example from our project. Where in blue we have um, defined functions that pertains to the actors, so that are external to the system. Um, we have provide electrical power, interface with user, uh, manage strategic decisions, threatening, manage focusing, provide target distance, cost. Uh, 
uh, this dot beam. So all those are external functions, and we have in green the, 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 the main function of the system. Manage laser, process beam, manage temperature, and manage power supply. Again, this is something that can be sometimes uh, very handy to, to make sure we, 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 we divide between other actors the responsibility function-wise. And uh, it's, it's, it's worth uh, having this kind of diagra diagram to have as a reference and, uh, and to use it later on if there is risk of scope creeping or, or, or so on. So again, a, a very handy diagram. Uh, regarding the, the, the architecture of the system functions, we, only sh we are only showing uh, two levels, but of course, it's broken down into other levels depending uh, on the needs and uh, the details that are required for this for, for, from the project. Um, other diagrams that are used are system data flow function, uh, function blank, sorry, where we define functional exchanges between system functions and external functions, and uh, the system architecture diagram which allocate functions to, to system and external systems. Uh, on to the next layer. So, so we go to the logical architecture uh, related artifacts. We use the functional scenarios to, to define uh, sequence diagrams that relates to capability or use case. Uh, we use also logical components breakdown diagrams, which gives an architecture of, um, of the logical components uh, we're also using logical architecture diagram, which allocate the functions to the logical components previously defined, and that also describe the, the kind of exchanges we have between logical components uh, uh, and function and allocated functions. So in the bottom, you can see uh, a small exit, um, again, from one of our laser projects. So it's a bit small, I'm, I'm not sure you can read, but I can, uh, can try and, uh, and describe. So in terms of logical components, we have the laser source module, we have a beam processor module, we have a power supply module, temperature management, collimation module, and um, yeah, phase processing module. And all those have uh, functions we have seen previously allocated. And uh, we can see different um, exchanges between the other functions. So this is a very handy way to, to start seeing all the interdependencies between the logical components. And that's where we can start allocate performances between the different logical components and have a, a strategy in terms of uh, what logical components will do what. And uh, so that uh, starts to be very useful. Um, and finally, for this layer, we, we, we use also exchange scenarios to define seconds diagram. On to the, the last layer. So for this one, unfortunately, uh, I'm not sharing things coming from our experience for, for intellectual property reason. So I'm just providing uh, a diagram for, 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 for illustration's sake. So it's not uh, coming from us. But um, the kind of diagram we are using are physical components breakdown diagrams and physical architecture diagrams. So on top of what we have seen previously, we have the physical layer which allocates the logical components to the actual hardware. And uh, in the end, we can derive from that requirements to the components. And um, it's also tying up, let's say the specification, the needs to the hardware solution. So that's very key or critical in terms of uh, committing to a solution. And when we need to change something in the, in the solution, uh, allocating, for example, uh, the components to an, another hardware, we can do it quickly and see, seeing automatically the impacts on all the other diagrams. That's where also Capella is uh, is uh, is very powerful to 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 keep all things tied up and to have a handy way to visualize the the, the choice that, that that were made during the design and uh, performance allocation also. So on to the next sections. So we, we will start discussing benefits and hurdles that were, that were met during this implementation. Um, starting with the hurdles and keeping the, the best for last, um, we, we had a bit of a resist to change uh, uh, in, the, in the company because um, of course some, some, some departments or some people are used uh, to best practices 
and are not very keen on, on changing the way they, they, they work. Because of course the change uh, takes energy and uh, if there is no uh, direct uh, incentive for the change, it, it can be a challenge. So that's something that was not very easy for us to get traction across all departments with this uh, methodology. But it's something we are working on and, and getting a bit better at. Another hurdle we faced was um, that Capella tool can be a bit greedy in terms of resource consumptions. So it, it requires uh, a powerful enough computer so, so one can uh, uh, edit and, and, and produce diagrams in a, in a quick way. So for, for example, uh, I have a, a desktop laptop, which is not very powerful and uh, sometimes it, it can lag quite a bit and it can be a bit discouraging from time to time. But using a, a powerful enough computer, all these uh, fade out and there is uh, everything is smooth. So it's just a matter of having the, the right hardware for the right needs. But this needs to be accounted for, otherwise uh, the, the experience can be can be difficult. Um, another hurdle we faced was to to the, 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 the compatibility of a project created in a Capella version uh, with respect to another Capella version. So our projects were created in in, uh, in Capella V4, if I remember V4, and some other projects were created with older versions. And uh, of course. Uh, um, trying to open uh, a project that was created in V4 uh, with a V5.2, for example, is not uh, is not a given. It's not granted, and uh, one needs to migrate the project in order to try and and have it working on a newer version. But it's not always that straightforward. Uh, sometimes it could fail, and sometimes we, we did manage, but uh, it's something we we had uh, some issues with. Uh, of course, we are. We are not uh, the most knowledgeable in terms of project migration, so we're still learning, but it's something we have um, we had a lot of trouble with. And in order to address that, we, we have baselines uh, a version of Capella. So everybody uses the same version of Capella and uh, making things easier for, for other people to use, uh, to, to, to open a project with, with, with their own Capella version. But of course, when uh, if a new version of Capella provides uh, neat features we want to use it will be then uh, it will be then an assessment to to know whether it's worth baselining a new version of capella and to assess the cost in terms of resources to migrate all the projects from the current baseline to the new one so it's also something to to account for as it could be uh, it could be it could be problematic to some extent no uh the benefits we, we we draw from Arcadia implementation, there are many. So first off, it provides the guidelines and uh, and the Canva that ensure all project elements are produced and properly connected to one another. So just following the the layers, for example, it's a bit of a foolproof approach, and uh, it, it helps with uh, yeah making sure nothing is missed and uh, everything is working with uh, the other elements that are interacting with uh, with it. It's also a very smooth capitalization, uh, sorry, it's a very, it's also a very smooth capitalization of information and knowledge uh, tool, uh, especially for complex products. Um, I have uh, one example I can provide in my former experiences in other companies. When I joined, I had, uh, in order to get up to speed with the project and products, I had to dig into different folders, so like definition files, uh, components matrix from quality, uh, drawings, uh, and all the information was split into different area. And it was, uh, without the knowledge, it's a bit of a challenge to, to get everything together. So it was a bit of an adventure. Um, in Silas, we, we, we use so we use the, the, the Arcadia methodology, but we also have implemented the HTML tool. Um, it's an add-on that allows to export the Capella projects into an HTML format. So anyone with, uh, with a browser can open it and everything is uh, centralized into one, one uh, HTML page. So for me, it was very handy to have all those, all those information, the traceability from the user needs, the solution that was selected, 
and uh, and the requirements that were de derived. So. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Julia. Your voice has broken since a few seconds. Uh, oh. It seems to be back. Oh, okay. Excellent. So, sorry. I think my uh, headgear is a uh, is a bit uh, is a bit uh, clunky. So I hope. Um, yeah. Sorry for that. Yeah. It seems to have broken down again. If you if you can just rewind for thirty seconds, please. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so um, I was talking about the benefits of uh, using Capella and, and especially the HTML uh, add-on, uh, which allow for, 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 for project to be exported on an, an HTML format. So anyone with a browser can open it and read it. And it's a single source of information. And in my experience, it was very useful because I used to, in the other compan companies I joined, I, I used to, look for information about the project or the products in different uh, areas, so definition files, drawings, uh, quality documents, compliance metrics, and, and, and so forth. So all the information was split into different uh, folders. And it was a bit of a struggle to, to get acquainted and uh, to build knowledge about um, uh, the, the product and the project. Whereas here, everything in, in one place, and um, it really helped for, for, for getting up to speed with uh, the project and uh, the strategy that was that was that was that was defined for, for the project I'm working on. Um, another another neat thing from uh, from, from Capella, it's uh, and uh, Arcadia. It's a very flexible methodology. It can be tailored depending on the needs. So it could be very heavy with a lot of traceability uh, for for huge and complex projects. But on the other hand, it can be very light and uh, one can select uh, very few key artifacts to make things uh, uh, more more lighter and, and less uh, resource consuming. Um, it also provides a single source of information, so accessible and understandable for people coming from different backgrounds. Uh, yeah, visual, visual diagrams make things way easier especially if you're working on international projects where we have, uh, we're all, all coming from different backgrounds and culture uh, using, for example, seconds diagrams were very, very useful in uh, some uh, technical workshop we had with uh, Italians, uh, Deutsch, Dutch, uh, British, uh, Spanish people. So it, it comes very handy to, to, to share understanding and, and making sure we are all aligned in terms of assumptions and what we are talking about. Um, it's also very efficient to establish rational and, and organic boundaries between involved entities, as we've seen with a few diagrams we have shown before. And uh, finally, upon application of a several projects and products, uh, it allows for identification of trends and way to optimize and rationalize the product's project management. So we have the example of um, the strategy uh, departments uh, which uh, applied this uh, methodology um, first off to to list all the stakeholders that are involved in the line of products to derive from that constraints that are relevant and connect this with solution uh, line of products solutions that are consistent so so that's uh, another uh, another area where it came very handy to use um, uh, the, the, the methodology and the tool so to to conclude, uh, there is a few. I can present uh, the few the, a few yeah the, a way forwards regarding the implementation because it's still uh, it's still um, ongoing and we 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 are still keen on pushing forward this implementation uh, because um, from from all the benefits we 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 drawn uh, we want to, to to push this further. And in order to do that, we need to to keep deploying on relevant projects. Uh, not to be too greedy, but to make sure that uh, while we apply the methodology, we will draw um, benefits and it, it, it will showcase for other people that are resisting, let's say, how efficient it can be, and uh, yeah, and uh, to, to to bring to to bring an incentive for them to to change. Uh, we also need to look for a way to tailor Capella to make it more user friendly, 
So if it's possible to to remove some features or to uh, to 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 make it uh, lighter uh, in order for uh, an easier use. Uh, we need also to adapt means and best practices. Uh, we, very important to so, uh, improve our knowledge of the of the tool and the method methodology, and uh, see if there is uh, other relevant add-ons we can we can include, for example, and uh, yeah, and, and, and learn from best practices from other companies and um, other people who use the tool, and benefit from those uh, yeah return of experience. And uh, finally, we need to process feedbacks and put up relevant metrics in order to help with culture change within the company. So th thank you for your attention. So that's, uh, yeah, that, that's a, a small peek at uh, how we're we, we, we adapting the, the methodology and how we're using Capella. And uh, we're still pushing for it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so th if you have any question, I'll be happy to, to try and answer. answer. Okay, thank you, Julien, for this presentation. There are a few questions, so I will uh, put them on screen right now. Um, uh, in order of votes, so the first question is related to uh, Team for Capella, apparently. Do you use Team for Capella? And if not, how many separate instances of Capella do you have? And how do they share the model and stay in sync? So, so far, we, we don't use Team for Capella. I take, I take notes. It might be something that, that will come handy or interesting for later. So thanks for, for the information. And at the moment, we, we have only one per project. We have only one, uh, let's say, Capella leads to prevent, uh, let's say, uh, the risk of uh, having some the project being incompatible. So we have only one people per project uh, managing, let's say, the Capella models. So, so, so we limit the risk of having sync issues uh, uh, this way. Okay, very clear, thank you. Then the next question is about the migration from one version to the next, I guess. So have you defined any migration policy of your Capella models? Which kind of migration issues did you face? And do all your users have the same and single Capella version? Indeed, so yeah, interesting question. When we started, we were a bit, uh, uh, let's say, free-minded. Free so we didn't really mind uh, using different version across different projects. So we had the issue of uh, not being able to to open some projects that were created with all the older versions, and uh, that's where we, we we tried to to change our let's say best practice. And one of the key best practices was to baseline. So across all the company for all projects we we, we, we are now using capella v5.1 and that's the baseline and uh and uh yes yeah, so the, the, the because the, the, the issue we faced trying to migrate uh, a project from one version to the other was that it's not necessarily uh possible from our experience uh, i just want to to to, to disclaimer we, we are i'm not i'm not an expert so maybe i'm missing uh, so, some uh, some knowledge about uh, the proper methodology, but uh, I browse and I try to I try to find uh, best practices about that. And as far as uh, as we are as we have experienced, uh, it was not possible to migrate, for example, one version v4 to to v5.1. Sometimes it was necessary to try to go through all the the the, the, the version in between. So it could be very time consuming and sometimes even doing that uh, failed. So Okay, und understood. And I can confirm that it's not uh, not every migration path is supported. Uh, that is uh, that is true. So um, the next the question first... then. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Uh, here is the next question. If I understood well, you don't use data flows, uh, data flow blank diagrams. If that is so, how do you define the functional exchanges between the leaf functions of a parent function? Mm. So uh, I'm not just to make sure I understand the the, the question uh, the question properly. If I understand, you don't use data flows uh, diagrams. So I. I guess we are. I didn't show all the examples uh, because I could not share. Uh, it's a bit uh, sensitive data, but we do have 
data flows diagrams. Either um, we, we use sequential diagrams, and we use also the in the lab, um, so logical architecture diagrams. We do uh, this describe all the functional exchanges, for example. So we do have this kind of diagrams. However, uh, I'm not aware of. Um, wait a second. How do you define the functional exchange between the leaf function and the parent function? So in terms of vocabulary, I'm not sure about leaf functions and parent functions. But we do have um, a hierarchy in terms of uh, functions. Uh, so, so we have level one functions like parent functions, and we have lower level functions. And uh, we do describe the interaction between all the functions, uh, actors functions, actors allocated functions, sorry, and system allocated functions. So we do try to, we have this kind of diagrams, if I understand the question. Uh, but uh, we, 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 yeah, I think we have this kind of diagram. Well. Thank you very much, Julian.